Good evening and welcome to the North Idaho Board of Trustees August 21st meeting. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. And Trustee Banducci, would you, Trustee Banducci, would you read the mission statement? Um, let me get my glasses. All right. Hey, you're supposed to let me know when you're going to do this to me. No, I like the surprise. <laughs> All right. All right, the North Idaho College mission statement is as. North Idaho College meets the diverse educational needs of students, employers, and the northern Idaho communities it serves through a commitment to student success, educational excellence, community engagement, and lifelong learning. Thank you. We have a full quorum tonight. Um, and board, have we all had an opportunity to review the minutes? And if you have done so and there are no changes, we will accept them as written. Hearing no changes, we'll accept the minutes. Thank you. And uh, Shannon, you have the public comment? Mr. Miller. That was fast. You're up already. Thousands. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Doug Miller. I was born and raised in Coeur d'Alene and attended this college from 1969-1971. Graduated from here in 1971. Uh, my oldest son also attended this college and graduated and then and moved on to the University of Idaho and got his degree in architecture and his master's degree at the University of Idaho. Uh, I've been a longtime member of the NIC Booster Club as well as the Alumni Association. Uh, the question that I have for the board, I mean obviously with the athletics uh, being in the news front and center quite a bit, is what is the board's intentions, if any, to move the college back out of the NWAC into the NJCAA uh, division. Okay, so Mr. Miller, we, we generally take public comment. We don't we don't respond to public. Oh no, comment. that's fine. I but, understand. I'm not I'm not familiar with your protocol here, so. But I don't. But I don't want you to go away um, feeling like you've accomplished nothing. Okay, thank <laughs> so, you. So I will just say, in general, the board hasn't had any certainly any discussions about whether to move conferences in the future. That could come forward and be an agenda item, and there'd be plenty of public notice that okay. we were going to discuss that. Um, so, but at this point in time, there's been no discussion to move out of our current our current. Okay. Uh, Would one of the items possibly be a petition or signatures from community members? To change, conferences. to change conferences? Well, we, we wouldn't ever tell the community what they could or could not do to right. approach us. Um, but at this point in time, we're still trying to work through uh, the entire situation with the NWAC. We have pledged to the NWAC that we're going to do our best to work within their rules. And so it's probably a little soon for us to yeah, get any strong I consideration. I understand that. So. But we do appreciate your comments and being willing to come here tonight. Okay. Well, thank and you. And I see grad. Thank you for that. <laughs> you betcha. You bet <laughs> you. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. That takes us on to celebrating success. And Dr. Burns, would you do the introduction? Chair Wood, members of the board. Um, it's my pleasure this evening to introduce Fred Swanson, who is the director of our um, Basic Patrol Academy here at North Idaho College. We're really proud of our Basic uh, Patrol Academy. It was um, one of those programs that took a lot of work, a lot of energy, a lot of community involvement to actually be able to offer this program in North Idaho. And um, we're proud of the work that we've done over the years. And so Fred is here to share some of that success with you and also in a way give thanks to the board and the college for the support that we've received in this program because this program requires a lot of maintenance and, and um, probably supplies that most programs don't require. And so he's here to share part of that with you. Thank you. Welcome, Fred. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Members of the board, Chair Wood, President McLennan, 
Thank you for the opportunity for us to share the success of the North Idaho College Basic Patrol Academy Law Enforcement Program. Actually, the program actually has a long history with NIC starting in 1973, as far back as I could find. Between 1973 to, to the spring of 2019, records indicate a total of 251 graduates from the law enforcement program. Because of the nature of the program as a selective entrance program, in which the students must undergo a background investigation and polygraph examination, and the, for the past several years, the students also had to complete a psychological evaluation uh, that may affect numbers of attendance. Many of those graduates gained employment in the local law enforcement agencies in North Idaho, including several who are now, or were before retirement, supervisors and administrators in the respective agencies. Additionally, many of those graduates moved on to greener pastures in the surrounding states. In 2009, with the implementation of the academy format currently in use, as we're doing it today, the Idaho Peace Officers Standards and Training Council accredited NIC's program to teach post material for peace officer certification in Idaho. North Idaho law enforcement agencies were very strong advocates of a law enforcement academy in North Idaho. These agencies committed resources and equipment for this to happen. This provided local law enforcement agencies the ability to send their new hires to the North Idaho College Academy, referred by many as Post North, and North Idaho College was able to offer the post-secondary certificate in addition to the two-year Associates of Applied Science degree it had currently offered. Having their new officers trained here in North Idaho by officers they would be working with rather than sending them south to Boise and eventually Meridian for an extended period has proven a huge benefit to the agencies, their employees, and the self-sponsored students. This greatly increased the number of graduates in the certificate program. Records show the first year of having the, the academy format, there were 32 certificate graduates and one AAS graduate. Since that time, we have had 206 graduates of the post-secondary certificate and 15 AAS degrees. The law enforcement program currently offers, a ba offers their basic technical certificate, which encompasses 22 college credits, which are attached to three college courses. Upon success, sorry, <coughs> excuse me, upon successful completion of the Basic Patrol Academy. At the Academy, we teach over 46 topics referenced to these three college courses. A student may earn an intermediate technical certificate with completion of the Academy and an additional semester of four general academic courses. And the AAS includes the Academy credits with an additional three semesters of general education instruction. All students are encouraged to continue their education to obtain the AAS, but many choose to initially graduate the academy to begin their careers in hopes to return later for the degree. Self-sponsored students are those individuals who, for a variety of reasons, may not be initially hired by an agency or who select to gain the training before applying for a full-time job. They pay their own way through the, the academy which includes the tests and exams during the selection process, their own uniforms, which currently costs approximately $1,000 for them to get started. And then they pay the tuition and student fees as well. It is a true commitment to, the, to attend the academy after having paid those costs and sitting next to students in the same class whose agencies paid their costs and who are being paid to attend. Since 2009, the largest class was 21 and the smallest class was eight students. This program has realized a huge commitment from North Idaho College and the local law enforcement community. Initially, in addition to the large purchases by NIC, some equipment to include patrol cars used by the academy were donated by local agencies. Agencies followed their employees to more consistent, I'm sorry, agencies allowed their employees to more consistently instruct at the academy, sharing their knowledge and experience to the newly hired agency students, their future fellow employees, as well as to the self-sponsored students. North Idaho College employs 1.7 full-time positions working at the academy. We provide over 600 hours of post-mandated training instruction in one semester. 
we rely heavily upon the more than 50 ins adjunct instructor instructors and volunteers from the various law enforcement agencies in North Idaho. Our instructors and volunteers come from agencies such as the Idaho State Police, Kootenai County Sheriff's Office, Kootenai County Prosecutor's Office, Boundary County Sheriff's Office, Bonner County Sheriff's Office, the Coeur d'Alene Police Department, the Post Falls Police Department, the Rathrum Police Department, the Priest River Police Department, mm -hmm. the Latah County Prosecutor's Office, and the Idaho Fish and Game. Many of the agencies allow their employees to teach at the academy on department time at no cost to NIC. And while some of them, North Idaho College must pay as adjunct instructors. The academy is very personnel intensive, as you may realize. Equipment is also a large, huge commitment from North Idaho College and the agencies. For example, in 2009-2010, my predecessor obtained a grant to purchase a firearm simulation system. The system, at a cost of approximately $100,000, has been used to teach basic fundamentals of marksmanship, de develop and build decision-making skills, force escalation, de-escalation, use of force, and shoot, don't shoot, and weapon handling techniques. Unfortunately, this equipment became outdated and has not been usable for the past few years. North Idaho College recently obtained state funding approval to replace this system at a, at a cost of approximately $45,000 seems the prices have gone down. <laughs> in the past three years, we've also replaced three patrol cars used for skills training, traffic stop scenarios, and emergency vehicle operations. And late last fall, NIC obtained funding to replace the skid car system, which was dated back to the early 2000s. That was a significant cost as well, $62,000 for the system, $20,000 for the vehicle. The skid car system is a driver training program that represents a proven concept we refer to as the science of controlled driving. Based on a foundation of mind over motor, this approach builds and strengthens a driver's understanding of vehicle dynamics, hones his or her sensory skills, and teaches sound driving strategies while refining a driver's reactionary motor skill. That's from the skid car system website. That kind of explains it. This is a valuable knowledge and skills for officers who spend a majority of their day driving emergency response vehicles. Three years ago, the North Idaho College Foundation provided funding for the purchase of 12 laptop computers for student use at the academy. With the implementation of electronic training resources and material for the students, this has helped modernize the training platform and provides readily available avenues for online resources for the students. We've also updated the firearms used in the academy, moving from a variety of calibers of weapons to the weapons platform currently used by the majority of the agencies we serve. All of these equipment improvements have been for the benefit of the student. Equipment is very costly, but important to maintain currency and to enhance the training. The local law enforcement agencies recognize this and through their strong commi commitment to this program have helped with that improvement. Last year, the Coeur d'Alene Police Department obtained approval to, do, to donate portable police radios to the academy, which are very beneficial when working in the scenarios, uh, traffic stops types in incidents. Unfortunately, we're not able to use those radios because of frequency issues. Post Falls Police Department had radios that, were, that had frequencies that we could use, so they're in the process, the final stages of donating those radios to the, the academy for our use. And lastly, with the size of the current academy, the Coeur d'Alene Police Department and the Kootenai County Sheriff's Office have assigned, each agency has assigned a recruit training officer to the academy at absolutely no cost to the North Idaho College. Both are experienced officers, ag agency recruiters, and field training officers for their respective agencies who bring a wealth of knowledge and experience to the program. The RTOs will help supervise the students, recruits, and provide guidance to help understand and assimilate into the police culture, mindset, and discipline necessary for the successful career in law enforcement. The implementation of this program already has other agencies considering doing the same in the future. This commitment from the agencies greatly underscores the strong collaboration and partnerships NIC has maintained with the North Idaho College, I'm sorry, the North Idaho law enforcement community, and demonstrates the wish of success for all students. I'd ask Detective Taylor, she is um, from Coeur d'Alene Police Department, assigned as the RTO at the Academy. She was late with the class. Uh, she was going to be here. She told, said I could tell her story as a self-sponsored student. 
Um, she explained that she had tested for agencies, wasn't able to get hired for ver a variety of reasons, and decided to put herself through as a self-sponsor. She paid her own way. Uh, immediately after graduation, got hired with the Kootenai County Sheriff's Office, worked there a short time, and then went to the Coeur d'Alene Police Department. She's now a field training officer, RTO, um, great officer. So that's just one success, success story of her that she couldn't be here. That was quick. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, thank you, Fred. Good information. Uh, Trustee Dunlap. Fred, thank you very much for uh, that explanation about the uh, academy, but could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? <laughs> yeah, I don't have to read that. Um, <laughs> I, I worked for, I started with the, Mos or the Lataw County Sheriff's Office in Moscow, worked there for a few years, worked for Moscow Police Department for a few, year, few years, and then got hired with, with what is now the Idaho State Police, uh, retired from there after 26 years as a detective. Mm -hmm retired to take the, the job at North Idaho College. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Banducci. Fred, just out of curiosity, approximately how many of the uh, students are paying their own way? If you had to guess, or maybe you know. Uh, I didn't put that statistic together. Uh, right now, in our, we have a class of 15. We have five self-sponsors out of the others are agency sponsored. And is that typical, a third? Yeah, that's about typical, yeah. We've, uh, we've had classes with one self-sponsors. Uh, last class we had four. Before that we had six, so it, it varies, yeah. Now you shared the story with us. Um, is that typical that the self-sponsored folks get hired pretty readily? It's about, a, I did the, kind of did some numbers, it's about 80% success rate of getting hired. Again, that is dependent on the applicant. Sure. Um, some have moved out of the area, decided not to do it. Uh, we've had some failures in the, at the academy as well that obviously couldn't go on. Sure, it's not for everybody, but I was just curious. So there's a fairly high success rate for those that choose to take that path, though. Yes, yes. We've had students hired during the academy by agencies. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Howard. Fred, I, I wanted to thank you for that outline of the training that these uh, law enforcement personnel, prospective law enforcement personnel get and uh, personnel uh, in practice at the time or in, employed at the time. You know, so often the public uh, hears about law enforcement and it's good for your presentation, which is going to be televised, that the public will understand the nature of the training that they get and how, how involved it is and how in-depth it is. Um, so I want to thank you for that, not just for our own edification, but for the edification of the public that listens to these presentations. And believe me, I, people actually watch these meetings. It surprises me yeah. sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I, yeah, I did have a, a question, though. Over the period of time that we've had this program, there have been issues with regard to North, North and South Idaho and where we have the training and how we concentrate. Do you have any suggestions that, that we should listen to about ways to improve the program as it presently sits? A, part, a large part of its funding, um, the, all the funding goes straight, it goes to the south in the Meridian, uh, state funded, general funded, uh, funded through citations. So that, that takes a, a lot of um, avenues for us to be able to present the exact same program they have. Uh, I know you, you, just, you talked about previous issues with post and, and the bantering of starting an academy up here. And, uh, that was the that administration at that time of post. Uh, currently, the post administration is very open, uh, more willing to discuss issues with us. Uh, they they share the information with us freely. I, I call down and I said, "Can I have this?" And they give it. I mean, that day I have it. So I think it was an atmosphere of that administration that's no longer there. That's good to hear. Yeah. So I think it's very improved greatly. And even talking to the chiefs and sheriffs, everybody's been impressed with that. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fred, uh, to follow up on that, uh, the best model in my mind for the entire state would be to decentralize and have post academies all over the state funded by the state. We're not there yet. So uh, the work that you're doing at, at NIC is just so important, and I'm so happy to hear how closely you're working with our local agencies couple of follow-up questions. The, the highest level that 
a, a patrolman could possibly get would be the intermediate certificate, and you've offered that through the college. Through, that's the post intermediate, correct? It, that well, it's a post. I mean, sorry, it's an intermediate technical certificate from North Idaho College. So it has okay. nothing to do with the post academy. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Post issues their own certificates of uh, being certified to be a police officer. The basic intermediate advanced master's supervisory yeah. yeah my my thought my question about that is i wonder if that's a possibility you know it doesn't take much to get those extra steps for officers i don't know if that's something down the road we could look at because that actually impacts their wallet yeah. um yeah. i can't speak for all agencies but for Coeur d'Alene police department they are paid additional wages if they get those advanced certificates and and that level of training benefits all of us yes so throwing that out there um, the other the congratulations on the skid car thank you as we well know um, one of the highest risk officers is driving and once they would leave the Academy in Boise years ago that was the end of the training for yeah. driving yeah. and all of you were on the road with us so <laughs> anyway um, that is really good news. Uh, along those lines another seed to set is our own EVOC course and I would look for partnerships with the agencies. NIC seems to have a lot of land out there on the prairie, but that EBOC course would keep law enforcement safe because they'd be able to practice all the time that emergency kind of driving. So. And, that, and if I can mirror that, I've talked to the, we, we use our driving courses up at the airport, a portion of the airport runway. Talking to the deputy director up there, he, he, he estimates a year up to three years and we won't be able to use it anymore just because of the traffic that they're getting up there. Yeah. So we're I've been talking with him. We're starting to branch out and trying to find that unilateral multi-agency cooperation to make that happen. We really need that. To, it's really critical for the safety of law enforcement and the public. Um, let's see. I thought I had one more thing. Uh, the RTOs, how many hours are they putting in? They're assigned to the academy full-time 40 hours a week. And the agencies are picking up that cost? Yes. That's an incredible commitment. Yes, so it very, that's very much is. Okay. Well, Fred, wonderful uh, presentation, and thank you. I, we're thank very you. excited about this. I can't believe it's been 10 years. Yeah. I don't know where the years <laughs> go. but Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. That takes us on to our constituent reports, and we have a... Uh, we have a new group. <laughs> so for ASNIC, Paul McLeod, welcome. Members of the board, Chair Wood, President McLennan, it's so good to be here. It's good to see you all again. Had a wonderful summer. Over the summer, ASNIC worked with uh, with the rest of the staff to put together orientations for the students, and uh, those went really well. We had a lot of help from ASNIC officers put in time over the summer to to help lead groups, and that was just it was it was wonderful. We went through our training week the week before school started, and that was just incredible. We kicked it off by going to the staff convocation. Uh, and it was really, really cool being being there, getting to see uh, the same thing that the staff do, uh, getting to experience that. It really was wonderful. It was really inspiring as well. The the whole thing was put together very well. And uh, uh, we also had the opportunity to use the ropes course behind the sub in some leadership training. It was fantastic. We partnered with the RAs and the uh, the rec staff to uh, get some team building in. That was wonderful as well. We also had the opportunity to do the green dot training and just knowing what to do in really difficult circumstances is really beneficial so I'm really glad we had that opportunity as well. Alright so we are trying to fill three Senate positions at the, right now. We're really excited we've gotten a lot of interest so far so we're hoping to get those filled right away in the first couple of weeks of school. Uh, a lot of senators have already picked up projects. We're really excited about that. Often it takes a little while for senators to, uh, to get into the role of things, but this group that we have, even though it's just a few of them, we're still missing a few members. They all are incredibly passionate. They're, uh, they're really excited, and uh, they're, I'm excited too. They're really passionate about making, making a real difference at this school, and we just love to see that. I began working with Peg Blake uh, to put together some kind of feedback 
for the Cardinal Central since just recently a lot of students just went through um, well had a lot of experiences with the Cardinal Central whether financial aid uh, registration all those things uh, we just want to get a, a feel of student experience there so we decided on doing a survey we'll be sending that out hopefully as soon as possible while their experiences are still fresh in their minds pretty short report today that's all I have for you thank you so much for having me that's great Paul questions board for our new ASNIC president Welcome aboard. We'd be fun to work with you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Not a question, but one quick statement. Oh. Hey, when you do fill those three spots, and hopefully that will go well, would love to have a list of who everybody is at that point, just so we can have reference for that. Oh, absolutely. I, I invited them to come. Unfortunately, a lot of the senators couldn't make it because we have an event going on right now. Uh, it's the tie-dye splash party over at the beach. You may have saw some students walking over there. That's much more fun. We're all going. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fine with me. All right. Uh, President you. McLennan had a comment. Oh, I, you may know I'm going to ask you this question, but is there anything unique about one of our senators this year in terms of uh, the constituent group that uh, she might represent? Oh, yes. Thank you so much for mentioning that, McLennan, uh, President McLennan. We have recently brought on a dual enrolled uh, position. So in the past, the dual enrolled, a third of our population is dual enrolled and we haven't had any real representation for those students. So this year we really wanted to give them some representation. So we adopted this new position and so far it's been great. Abby, uh, Abby Rhodes, uh, Rhodey is the one who's uh, taken up the I position. I know, She's... we all understand that <laughs> reference. She has been incredible. Um, we really want to make this a permanent position uh, in the Senate and uh, represent the dual enrollment students much more in the future. What high school is she with, Paul? Ooh, great question. I th believe it's Coeur d'Alene High School. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Anything further, board? Thank you for your report. Thank you. Thank you. Staff Assembly, Tom Green. Welcome, Tom. Good evening, Chair Wood, trustees. President McLennan, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to give the uh, talk about we had our first staff assembly meeting last Thursday, and um, Grain Stanley and Chris Martin were both guests for uh, there to, to, to give presentations, which were greatly appreciated. Um, uh, first, Chris Martin gave us a presentation on, he gave us some updates on some projects around town, I mean, around campus, some of the, the campus. Um, uh, buildings such as Boswell Hall, which is um, right now doesn't have any seats in the auditorium, and it um, those are in the process of getting moved in there. It's getting a really nice update, and it's going to be a, a facelift. Is, is how we put it, and it should be really nice. Uh, the other big project that um, was was really a surprise for me and some of the others was the Meyer Health and Science Building, which we saw an artist rendering. And it was impressive. It was really fantastic. And there's a lot of buzz about how um, uh, how impressive that project is. Um, it, it's, gonna, it's exciting. Uh, Chris Martin uh, also gave us a quick update on the uh, a few policies, policy 3.09 that's coming through. Um, and just kind of gave us updates where they are and, and some of the ones that are going to be uh, being, uh, on our on the horizon for this come upcoming semester and next semester. Uh, then Grain Stanley, who uh, was uh, brought with him Curtis Raditz and Steve McGordy. Uh, Curtis is from Sodexo. He had a few questions that um, had come up over the summer about some uh, uh, um, first right of refusal and some of the other just nuances and um, uh, uh, new procedures on campus that when it comes to Sodexo who's of course running dining services mm -hmm. um, and that was great it was great to have that open communication with Curtis there and there were a lot of questions from he took from the audience and um, real good good back and forth and I think we it went it went well good. Uh, like Paul it was a pretty short meeting so I it's going to be a short report tonight uh, is there any, any questions thank you Tom board questions for Tom Thank you. I have a question. Yes, Chris. So no. you were elected. Did you did somebody 
did you leave town and somebody said you're it or did you say I want to do this uh, well I was nominated I still don't know who nominated me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking for him actually <laughs> Well, uh, good. It'll be fun working with you. Well, thank you. It'll thank be, you for your We've been report. working together for a long time. Yes, actually. we have. <laughs> thank you, Chair Wood. Thanks, Tom. Uh, faculty Assembly, Chris Pichalt. Is that how it? Pelchat. Pelchat, thank you. Yes, I Chair Wood, fellow board members, President McLean, thank you for having me. Um, I'm here to present the Faculty Assembly report and uh, we had our first meeting last week. It, uh, it, was, it was rather short, just kind of procedural, getting everybody up to speed with how things roll. Um, we started off having to do some basic stuff. I didn't have a full executive committee, so it was just me and the VP. We needed to fill the, ch the uh, treasurer and um, secretary roles, so we started there. Um, we had a couple people that came, out during, came up during the summer with that expressed interest, um, so we got them nominated in, so now we have a full executive committee and once that was set then we rolled into the the actual meeting um, the folks that came on board uh, Josan Lean from English and Cheryl Cunningham from mathematics and they both chose appropriate roles English is the secretary and mathematics is the treasurer I, I like that that's perfect yeah um, I reminded folks about parliamentary procedure we had a lot of new new folks in the room and some of them hadn't really understood what faculty assembly was and so we talked a little bit about that and how how the, the group was going to make decisions and how to get things on the floor if they wanted them talked about so we went through that I reminded them of what the touch points were with the uh, leadership for the assembly chair and kind of went through the structure of all the meetings that I go to and people I talk to and um, so they were clear when they were talking to me as an assembly where their voice would then travel um, around campus and when that would happen so that that was nice for them we also talked about the importance of attending uh, the faculty assembly so last year um, I was a new faculty this is my second year um, I noticed that there was a lack of attendance at at some of the faculty assemblies and um, and there were some things that faculty would talk about and want their one of their uh, opinions heard and so we said that in order for us to have a collective voice as faculty attendance has to be up and I, I can't just bring a single faculty member's voice to a place like this and consider it to be the voice of the land we need everybody there to kind of say that that's the collective voice and so uh, we talked a little bit about the importance of that uh, we also spoke about the upcoming accreditation process uh, that the college is going to be going through and the impact that that's going to have on faculty there's going to be a lot of policies and procedures that are going to be put forward uh, most likely this fall in in line with that visit that's coming up in the spring and our group looks over that stuff occasionally and so we're gonna probably have some of that to look at we were also visited by Trisha Southard she came and spoke a little bit about the sterling silver awards and the importance of nominating faculty for those awards uh, last year only two faculty were nominated um, and we don't necessarily know why that was but she wanted to come and make sure that we do a better job showcasing the faculty that do really excellent work here on campus <coughs> And then we ended the meeting. Uh, we have a lot of things that we need to do procedurally to make sure that the faculty's um, responsibility for the participatory governance of North Idaho College is in place. And so we're getting everybody in line to make sure that they're serving on appropriate committees and that we all know who's serving where and making sure that everybody's doing their due diligence to do their share of the work. That's all I have for you. Any questions for me? Thank you, Chris. Uh, Joe. Uh, Chris, what, thank, first of all, thank you for stepping up to uh, uh, lead the faculty um, assembly. Sure. And uh, since you've been here such a short period of time, so <coughs> what do you teach and where are you coming to us from? Sure. So I teach in the Cardinal Learning Commons. Um, so there were some courses that were started last year as kind of an experiment to figure out how to, sh to better shape a first year experience here for students. Um, so I teach primarily in that area. I teach a course called Designing Your NIC Experience and then a course called Designing Your Life. Um, I come here from Stanford University. Um, I taught down there for six years, ran several programs down in that area. Uh, I am from here though. I graduated from Eastern Washington University and the University of Idaho. So this is coming home for me. So I'm pretty excited about, about the opportunity to come up here. Um, 
I ended up in this faculty assembly role. I didn't necessarily step up. It was, it was, uh, it was, it was a well, meeting let us where. Imagine that that happened. Yeah. yeah. I, somebody nominated me, and I and I said yes, and I figured it would I would be a name on a list of several other people, and folks would somebody else would be chosen, and that was that. And actually, we voted for uh, for me to become the chair, and I didn't realize that that vote went through until the next week. So. Well, thank you for being here. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Any other questions for Chris? Welcome home. No, oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, it's been it's been quite a while. I went from here to New York to California and back. So it was it was interesting how quickly you claimed North Idaho when you said you were from teaching in Stanford. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was only I was a I was a tourist there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> and that takes us to the Senate. Ben, would you pronounce your last name so I don't do the yes. same thing to you? Yeah, no problem. Uh, it's Tashida. Tashida. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, <clears throat> Chair Wood, members of the board, uh, we had our first Senate meeting uh, just last Thursday. Uh, it was uh, a meeting where we started off with. Uh, brief introductions and introductions of the process of the Senate, what happens with policies in the college as a whole, uh, bringing the new senators up to speed. Um, we also uh, did a brief review of Robert's rules of order um, and talked about how we use those. Uh, we then had an, uh, Chris Martin came to talk about the, the Armand building uh, naming that you'll see later today. Uh, we did pass that advisory vote uh, through the Senate uh, this time. Uh, following that, we then brought up our next agenda item, which was the copyright policy. Uh, that is one that was passed through the Senate last spring. Uh, we forwarded that onto the president. There were comments that came back, uh, and so we've retaken that one up uh, to consider that. Uh, there was a lot of discussion around the comments um, and uh, trying to figure out how we work and operate. Uh, and so we spent the rest of our meeting uh, working through that uh, that policy and tabled it and we'll actually bring that up uh, at our next meeting. Uh, the other thing we did is I talked about our schedule uh, given, it, given that this is an accreditation year. I went ahead and stacked up our uh, meetings. I doubled up most months. Uh, so I said thank you for for being here, everybody at the Senate, uh, and uh, hopefully that will be enough meetings to get us through. So uh, that was our meeting. Thank you. Any questions for Ben? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank and you. Thank you to all of our new constituent uh, reporters. We appreciate this. You'll spend the next year working with the board and giving us some great feedback, and we appreciate it. That takes us on to the President's report. Dr. McLennan. Thank you, Chair Wood. Uh, you know, I was going to start with the uh, convocation, but I, I think I'm going to end with that. So I'll start first with, uh, we had a visit on Monday uh, from Steve Ackerman. Steve Ackerman is the lead policy advisor for Representative Fulcher, and it was uh, his first trip to North Idaho in that capacity. Uh, he's based in DC. That's where he's doing his work uh, supporting uh, Representative Fulcher. Uh, but he wanted to learn uh, about North Idaho College. And uh, we spent uh, several hours with him, uh, took him through uh, the Parker Technical Education Center, uh, and um, uh, met with him to discuss some of the key strategic issues facing. Uh, North Idaho College in particular where our interest would be with federal uh, support through programs through the Department of Education, through the Economic Development Administration, uh, and he came to, a, I think, a pretty good understanding of uh, some of the important work that we're doing with those federal resources. We talked to him also about concerns re related to uh, accountability uh, for um, especially in, uh, in career and technical programs and short-term certificate programs. Uh, uh, and the easing of those accountability requirements by the Department of Education, uh, in particular with respect to uh, the impact that will have in the uh, proprietary world and the for-profit colleges um, having those accountability requirements removed. And we just uh, wanted to caution him and help him. We didn't caution him. We asked him in a cautionary way to keep track of the impact uh, of the removal of those accountability uh, features because it will have a pretty, it has a very dramatic impact, has had a dramatic impact 
uh, on a pretty large scale. You've read many national stories of uh, some of the institutions that have um, gone underwater and left students without neither certificate uh, but with also with heavy debt. So we uh, talked about that. We also took them on a tour through uh, the Headland Building and the Venture Center and the work that we're doing around entrepreneurship. And uh, so I think we did a good three or so hour primer of uh, what's important at North Idaho College from our perspective of federal involvement. We, um, I, I also want to acknowledge um, the media activity that's been uh, in the press related to the uh, uh, findings that were delivered to us from our athletic one of our athletic conferences, and um, the the tactic of uh, releasing all the relevant documents to the public for uh, their review uh, has been received favorably. Uh, we um, people are accessing those documents, and I do think it's uh, able to help them answer. Uh, many of the questions they might have. I'm very confident in the direction that we have been on and that we continue to be on with respect to uh, uh, correcting uh, actions that were cited in the uh, findings from the NWAC. And it, in particular, I want to just uh, acknowledge and, uh, and thank Graydon, Dr. Graydon Stanley uh, for the work that he's been doing. As you can imagine, this has been a a very heavy lift to get into the time and the level of detail that it's taken uh, to step into the role that he has and uh, uh, he's just done a terrific job and so I just want to share that appreciation publicly. Lastly, I want to go to uh, convocation this year. You heard uh, Paul talk about that. Um, it was our uh, theme of accreditation this year was our uh, introduction or reintroduction to the college community of the uh, this is the year of our full-scale evaluation visit by the Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities for our uh, uh, accreditation and to thematically uh, and uh, engage the institution in the work that we're going to be communicating quite a lot about and the, 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 but the intent with this convocation was to uh, share our story and uh, share the why uh, of of why we're here at North Idaho College and uh, so we had an exercise where faculty and staff talked about their why some shared their why in fact after the after convocation I had several people come up to me and personally share their why uh, with me uh, but uh, but both uh, Paul uh, and, and Chair Wood uh, shared their why publicly uh, at the microphone uh, to the auditorium and uh, uh, I think everybody, in, in either through drama or humor, uh, it was moved by those stories and appreciated uh, key people in leadership positions being able to share personal stories about their experience with North Idaho College, and so we uh, genuinely appreciated that. I also promised not to give a long speech, but to let uh, some of our students share their why, and so I thought for your uh, enjoyment tonight, we'd share a little portion of the video that was shared at Convocation. place where you can find yourself and figure out who you are. Gail Anderson, who found me after I spoke at a scholarship foundation event and encouraged me to actively look into a scholarship for single mothers. The fact that I was homeless before coming to this college, which is relevant because not only do I get a great education here with professors who've written books and who are huge members of the community that are well respected, but I also um, met my roommate here because of the resources and the clubs that NIC offers. But I loved it. I loved the grittiness. I loved all the squeezing and the challenging it did in my mind, and it was a workout. Two years of a serious mind workout, and I feel stronger because of it. I feel more empowered. I live out of a place of empowerment. NIC changed my life. When I started going there, um, I just realized how much the people 
that work there and other students um, were so hopeful and helpful and just into seeing you succeed. The best thing about NIC is the support. Um, thank you. Thank you to everybody who works their butts off to try to make people better. You are the reason that businesses exist. You're the reason why the economy goes. You are, um, you are sending people out and you're fine tuning them. The transition into their, their education was absolutely seamless and made it easy for someone like me who hadn't been to school in quite a while to integrate myself and be successful. Again, I, I, I can't thank NIC enough for how much they've helped me out and, and how they've helped me navigate even going to LCSC. The campus is absolutely gorgeous, so nothing like taking a class and then going for a swim in the summer right afterwards. And I just don't think that you can put a price on the experiences you find in college. Um, all the knowledge I learned, I mean, there's nothing like it. Waking up bright and early in the morning to walk onto that beautiful campus to learn something new every day. When I was serving at Olive Garden, um, I was back into the table at the end and they said we really like your customer service abilities how would you like a job and ever since then I've been a part of one of the I mean I would say the best job I've ever had honestly and I can attribute that directly to things that I learned at the college and so you know having said that taking that course and really you know kind of feeding off the enthusiasm from the other students and from my instructor really helped me kind of come around and realize who I am as a person, that I love talking to people, that I love being around them, and that I think I would love to do that as some sort of career choice. A lot of the learning really did happen outside of the classroom. It happened with those connections that I was making with other students and the connections I was making with other staff and just all of those relationships really led me to believe that I was meant to be there and I wasn't an imposter and it was I was doing what I was meant to be doing. I, I truly found my passion and my calling in life through my time at North Idaho College. Um, I was a housewife for 17 years. I went through a divorce. I realized pretty quickly that I didn't want to do retail or fast food or a waitress for the rest of my life and I was encouraged by my son, Josh, to go back to school. Um, I was a little hesitant, and he connected me with a lady that had went through the social work program, and she inspired me. And someone who has really influenced me at NIC has definitely been Josh Meisner. I not only had eight classes, eight classes with the dude, <laughs> but he also took time to talk with me whenever I needed a support system, whether it was for school health or personal problems, you name it, he was there for you. Those are all unscripted. Uh, and they were all selfies, uh, and uh, and it, one of the things that really impressed me when I saw it um, for the first time uh, was just the sheer diversity of our students and our students' experiences. Um, that concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. McClennan. Are there questions for the president? Well, I just want to comment that I really enjoyed the convocation. It was just it was just fun, really fun. And um, it seemed like there was a lot of participation. That, I think that's what made the difference. We, we weren't standing on the stage talking to people. Everyone was involved. So I'd like to commend your whole staff for working so hard on that. It was wonderful. Thank you. OK, I lost my, there we go. Uh, this takes us on to Meyer Health and Science Building Expansion Update. Trustee Dunlap. Thank you, Trustee Wood, or Chair Wood. The, um, ALSC architects uh, who have uh, been hired by the college to design the expansion of Meyer Health Science um, uh, facility have completed their initial schematic designs. And so a week from Friday, which would be August 30th, uh, Trustee Murray, myself, President McLennan, and uh, other members of the college committee will be meeting uh, with ALSC here on campus to review those schematics 
and uh, hopefully uh, we can bring that maybe to the next meeting to uh, show the full board and uh, members of the community uh, what that expansion will look like. Great, that is good news. Uh, any questions for Trustee Dunlop? Okay, thank you. Uh, you know what, Trustee Banducci, we don't have um, K -Tech. We don't have KTEC on the agenda. I was going to do it under remarks for the good. The that order, would work. But Thank I'll do you. it whenever you'd like. That was just an oversight on my part. I'm sorry. No worries. I did review the agenda. I apologize for that. Well, I'll be at the end. I'll keep it short. Okay. Uh, we have no old business, so our new business, uh, tab one, action item, approve naming of the Bob and Leona Diarmond building. Dr. McLennan. Uh, thank you, Trustee Wood. Uh, background uh, on this, uh, at the Leona December. Talk? I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just gonna make a motion and get through that quickly. Oh. Well, <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's good for the public to hear the background. Go ahead. But if you make a motion, I might, might respond. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll read this at the December 17th 2018 Board of Trustees meeting the board approved naming the North Idaho collaborative education facility the Bob and Leona Diarman building with the la later understanding that a descriptive functional title would be developed and submitted uh, at a later time the recommended full name of the facility submitted for board approval at this time is the Bob and Leona Diarman College and University Center uh, and so the requested action is to approve the Bob and Leona Diarmond Co College and University Center as the facility name for the building previously named the Bob and Leona Diarmond Building. Um, Trustee Howard, if you can repeat that acronym, I'll let you make the motion. <laughs> what acronym? I don't know. Yeah. Did you I, have I, a motion? Yes, I would move that. Um, Does that shorten too? I would move that we approve the renaming of the facility the, to the Bob and Leona DeArmond College and University Center. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Second by Trustee Dunlap. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, thank you for that. And well-deserved naming for the DeArmonds. Takes us to the board chair report. And I am going to follow the lead of the president. He got to show a cool video. We have another video that I'll do for my report. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. Someone just quickly drop the lights for me. I had this one professor, E. Miller, who teaches math. She cared so much. She would meet with me for two hours every day before class. And as painful and frustrating as it had to have been for her because, oh my God, I did not get it. She never once showed it. She was such a saint and she was always so positive and sassy and it just kept me going. Dude, because of you, I got to graduate. Like literally, thank you for saving my life. And there's so many moments and so many lessons that I learned that I'm always incredibly thankful for. And when I think of North Idaho College, I can't help but think of uh, my entire college experience. I just really love all the faculty at North Idaho College and everyone you meet there makes you feel like family and from now on you will be family. I'm just really glad that I chose to attend North Idaho College. Thank you, Laura. That concludes my report. I would go to the remarks of the good of the order, Trustee Banducci. Yes, we had a KTEC meeting on the uh, 14th, uh, earlier than our, uh, before our reception, actually, as it turned out. We um, re-elected Jerry Keene from uh, the Post Falls School District Superintendent as our chair, and uh, Ron Nilsson is our vice chair going forward. 
And um, it's been an interesting process over the last number of months with the funding and what's been going on at the state level. And um, so as of the 14th, we have now appears we are going to go ahead and get the HVAC program started. So if anybody out there is interested in HVAC, give KTEC a call. There's a few seats left there, I believe. That's in a cooperative uh, relationship with us. We'll be sharing an instructor, and he'll be coming over to our side of the street. Pretty exciting. And there was a, a significant waiting list, so they're going to do another, um, I don't know what the actual technical term for the class leader can help me, but they're CNAs, essentially. And uh, so that's pretty exciting, too, at KTEC. So you have an interest in that if you're hearing this or seeing it or you have a kid or grandkid encourage them but we're gonna I think we can accommodate another 12 with that I think that's pretty close to what the waiting list was so if you're interested do it fast uh, so enrollment was well over 400 and we just grew it a little bit more uh, so uh, and if you want to instruct please call us <laughs> we need, we're working on that uh, anyway it's all good news from KTEC they are doing great very good. Any questions for Trustee Banducci? All right. Thank you. Any remarks for the good of the order? <laughs> Hearing none, I will adjourn. Have a good evening.